Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on herp number 13, lucky 13, and we have a very good one for you today. Today we are going to be talking about the largest, well, let me rephrase this. It's probably, it's the largest turtle. There we go. We'll just make it simple. It's the largest turtle in the world. We are talking about... Damn. The leatherback turtle. Leatherback turtle, or scientific name, Dermochiles coriacea. Um, it is part of the family Dermochilidae. So, and it's the only species in this family. There used to be um, turtles, other turtles in this family, but they have since died off either through. You know, and you know, they were in geologic times there hasn't been any recent so this is the a very very unique turtle it is found globally it can be found as far north as alaska and norway and it's far south as the southernmost tip of new zealand so it kind of goes a little farther north than it does south but it does circumvent the globe um Something interesting about this, it is the most hydronamically designed body of any sea turtle. Um, most sea turtles are not um, as, they're not as hydronamic as these are. Um, one of the reasons why is it because it has this very large tear shaped, uh, teardrop shaped body um, that really cuts down on water on um, drag in the water and it has these incredibly large front flippers to help them speed through the water um, and in fact the flippers on the um, leatherback turtle are the largest in proportion to its body of any of the sea turtles as well the front flippers can actually grow up to 2.7 meters that's about nine feet in large uh, specimens that is a massive span for turtles most of your turtles are significantly shorter um one thing that is incredibly unique to this as its name would suggest it actually doesn't have a true shell it actually has a thick leathery skin that has a lot of small osteoderms which are very small bony deposits whereas most turtle shells the turtle shell is an actual bone Whereas this is just extremely tough leather that is just kind of studded with um, small bits of bone. Um, and it has seven distinct ridges going down um, its leather back. It's this shell, if you would call it. As you can see, it is dark gray to kind of black in color. Um, and it has a little bit of a paler underside. That's that counter shading that we've talked about so often. Um, here you can see another one. This one's a little bit darker. You can see that it has these small cusps on its beak. Um, that's pretty standard for most turtles. They're going to have some, some sort of cusping. Very few turtles actually have just a straight beak. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it is the largest of all living turtles. Um, it is not the largest turtle of all time. Um, that is, that belongs to Archelon, I believe, um, which is a prehistoric, prehistoric turtle that I definitely encourage you to go do some research on. That, that was a impressive turtle. Um, but it is the fourth heaviest reptile behind three crocodilians. So think about like your American alligator, your Nile crocodile. Those are the only things that are heavier than the leatherback sea turtle in the world. Um, so pretty darn hefty. These can get to about one to one and three quarters meters, um, which is about three and a half to five and a half in um uh what's called curved carapace length where you're taking a measurement i believe it the curved carapace length starts here and then measures to the tip um don't quote me on that i never use curved carapace length but i believe that's what it what it is and most of your leatherbacks are going to weigh somewhere between 250 
and 700 kilograms, which that's about 550 to 1,550 pounds in weight. So almost a ton and a half for your very, very large specimens. Um, the largest specimen ever was actually found on Pakistani beach in Pakistan, obviously. Um, and it measured 213 centimeters or about, that's like right at seven feet in the curved carapace length measurement. And it weighed 650 kilograms, which that's 1,400 pounds in weight. So really, really big turtle. Um, something else that's, it is very unique to the leatherback. Um, leatherbacks are endothermic. What an endothermic is kind of what the people would call warm blooded. Um, you know, everyone has heard that reptiles are cold blooded and mammals are warm blooded. Well, that's not, not actually the case. Um, so endothermic um, what you would call cold-blooded organisms are called ectothermic, meaning that they rely on the outside environmental uh, temperatures to regulate their internal body temperature. Um, leatherbacks are actually endothermic, meaning that basically they are warm-blooded. They are metabolically generating their own body heat. Um, now, how do, you, how do they do this? This is actually done through a couple of different measurements so one of them is called gigantothermy meaning that these are just so big that their internal core temperature stays high just because it's so far removed from the outside environmental pressures you know ocean water is very very cold and being so big it allows them to keep their vital organs their heart their stomach um well insulated and they help with that insulation because these actually have a pretty thick layer of blubber, you know, that well fat that we hear of. They have a decent size, um, a decent thickness of blubber around them. Another way they do this is what's called countercurrent heat exchange. And that is actually how dolphins and whales help regulate their internal body temperature. And if you want to go into countercurrent heat exchange, we can discuss that. Uh, no problem, just leave me a comment asking me how do they do this, or I encourage you, go do your own research, but it's an extremely important process that's really interesting um, and definitely something worth considering. Um, these leatherbacks are one of the deepest diving marine animals, and they have been documented diving down as deep as 1,280 meters, which that's about 4,200 feet. So they can get really far down there. Um, dives on turtles usually last between three and eight minutes, but they can go up to 20 minutes, I believe, maybe even longer, but they can get, they can stay down a long time, but most of the time their diving is about three to eight minutes long. Um, something else interesting about leatherbacks, they are the fastest moving non-avian reptiles. Um, basically you take all the reptiles in the world and we're talking about over a distance um, some things can obviously just move faster than them you know in a short burst but you poke over a long distance um, leatherbacks have been um, documented the record is was this one leatherback I believe near Australia um, was going 35.28 kilometers per hour, which that's about 21.9 miles per hour. So it was definitely booking it really fast. And that's how, um, they usually travel at about four miles per hour. That's still relatively speedy. That's another way that they actually keep their internal body temperature so high and that they're constantly on their move and they're moving quite a bit. These are very active predators, active swimmers. They are always looking for something to eat. And speaking of which, what do these eat? Well, the diet of a leatherback turtle is actually almost entirely jellyfish. Um, that's primarily what these eat. Um, I'm gonna say probably about 95% of their diet is actually um, jellyfish. They will also eat squid, um, but it is at a much lower rate. Um, 
but they are very adapted to eating these jellyfish. Their mouth and their throat actually have backward pointing spines. So when they bite into a jellyfish, you know, you can imagine if you've ever handled the jellyfish, they're very slimy, they're very slippery, they're very, you know, they're gelatinous blob, basically. And what those spines do is as it swallows, it keeps the jellyfish from coming back up. Those spines just keep hooking it on the way down. Um, so as you can imagine, that once they get swallowed, they don't have much. These do not have a very strong bite. Um, why would they? They're trying to eat jellyfish, so they're not. When you compare them to other turtles, they don't bite nearly as hard. Now, it's not sure really how long leatherbacks live. Some people say they live 30 years or more. Some people say they live 50 years or more. Some say they can live up to 100 years. The simple fact of the matter is, we don't know. Um, we can expect them to possibly live 35 years. Um, as long as they're doing good because most of the time leatherbacks once their biggest uh, predation rate actually happens when they first hatch and when they first hatch um, you know you've everyone has seen the little videos of the sea turtles hatching on the beach and then scrambling towards the ocean and you know birds coming in things like that well that's actually the case um that's how these things kind of produced is that um they just hope that a couple of these make it in there these don't have a lot of reproduction um the leatherbacks don't do a lot of reproducing so basically anyone that's lost is a pretty big detriment that's why they lay so many eggs um and speaking of that you know to their nesting habitats um nesting habitats have declined I think globally is the number. Um, nesting habitats have declined by about 40% over the last three generations. Not, okay, let me rephrase it. Not nesting habitat. The number of nesting turtles have declined by 40%. Um, and in a species that doesn't breed very often and is um, already on the decline, this is not necessarily a good thing. Now, these are listed as endangered, and let's get into some of the issues on why um, these are so dangerous. Well, what, one of the biggest reasons that these are in trouble is actually through bycatch. When big fishing trawlers go out to the ocean and are fishing for big schools of fish that, you know, cod and everything that people are eat on their table from seafood, um, leatherbacks will get caught in those nets. Now, there are certain companies that use um, what are called turtle deterrent devices, meaning that the turtles, it's harder for the turtles to get caught in the nets. However, leatherbacks are so big that they kind of don't necessarily fall into that. They kind of will still get caught in those nets. So that is a huge detriment to the population. Um, another big issue with leatherbacks is nest raiding. Um, people have gone through They've raided nests, um, particularly over in the Asian side of the world. Um, Leatherbacked eggs are sh super um, sought after, um, used in medicines and things like this. Um, they're considered a delicacy. Um, so there's, it's not necessarily a good thing when, and especially considering that the nests are just very easy pickings. There's nothing protecting the nests other than local regulations. Things like that and that's not to say there are plenty of regulations out there that are looking to work on leatherbacks and, and uh, bring back the reproducing population but now one of the kind of most interesting issue in resolves in um, in regards to the leatherback um, you know remember we were talking about what do these things eat well they eat jellyfish and one of the most common things that happens with these as far as issues is concerned is actually plastic bags in the ocean um so when you can imagine a jellyfish just floating around in the ocean and then a leatherback just you know is going around eating jellyfish and then it finds a plastic bag well a plastic bag just kind of floating around in the ocean looking soft a leatherback will eat on it well there's been numerous cases of where the leatherbacks have 
uh, suffocated, just choked to death because they swallow that plastic bag and their digestive system gets stopped up or it gets caught in their throat. It's, it's a huge issue for leatherbacks is plastic bags in the ocean. Not saying that um, plastic bags aren't an issue in anyway, but it is particularly end of an issue to leatherback sea turtles. Um, so one thing that we can talk about real quick is baby leatherbacks. Baby leatherbacks, you can really see the size of flippers compared to the body size in this picture. You can still see those ridges that come down um, the shell that we use in quotations on there. Um, but you know, these things are very protected. There's numerous, uh, it's a very big, almost booming um, tourism industry now for when these eggs start to hatch. Um, many people will come around and the, the scientists are there, you know, counting um, leatherbacks, making sure they get to there, you know, protecting them from overhead seagulls and things like this uh, from coming in and eating these. But it's actually a huge ecotourism boost where people will just come and watch the sea turtle hatch. And it's not just leatherbacks, it's actually sea turtles across, across the world. Um, people will come and just watch these baby sea turtles come through. Uh, or try and uh, struggle into the ocean. Once they get to the ocean, they're safer. And then after just a little bit of time, you know, they're pretty safe. Um, once you get to a certain size of turtle and they reach that relatively quickly, um, not many things will eat um, basically any sea turtles. But Thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you do, I would really appreciate it. Um, guys, take care of yourselves out there. Um, I really hope you're enjoying these. I know I am. Once again, take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And peace.